Hi, hello, hello. He is. There he is. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> can you hear us? Yes, yeah, so I can hear you guys crystal clear. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much, uh, you, Dr. Chris Bustamante, correct? Hello, doctor. Yeah, it's recent. <laughs> I finished my doctor degree in December, so I'm still getting used to it. Awesome. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so, Chris, you're you're an aesthetic nurse practitioner and you just got your doctorate like you said um yeah. and you went to columbia university correct yeah w one thing that i was reading on your bio that i was really excited about is you worked um at callen lord here in new york city um i did a clinical rotation there so when i was in my yes. rn program my master's program at columbia um, I got to do my community health rotation there, so it, I got to rotate with um, the nurses there and all that. And it was pretty cool. Oh, we love nice. that. We love yeah. that. And we're really excited because you're with um, Bespoke Surgical. Our, we love Dr. Goldstein here at Tag's mm -hmm. Podcast. He's been on the show several times, and we just think he's the greatest. What brought you to want to work with Bespoke Surg uh, Surgical and Dr. Goldstein? Yeah, um, I started there two years ago. Um, I was pretty much almost fresh out of my um, registered nurse program. I was starting my doctorate to become a nurse practitioner. Um, I always knew I wanted to be in aesthetics. Um, I come mm -hmm. from a makeup artistry background before I was working in medicine. Uh -oh. um, so it's always been my passion. Like I was not someone who went into medicine like kind of like, all right, let me explore to see what I like. Like, no, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to inject. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do chemical peels. I wanted to do all that. Um, nice. I got all the things I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll We're going to have you do an assessment on us. Before no, <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to um, get introduced to Dr. Goldstein um, through a mutual friend who um, she's a, she's a nurse who practices aesthetics as well. Um, he was looking for someone to start to start out doing aesthetics at his practice before he had never had it before. Um, and so we kind of created together this sort of niche section of um, anal aesthetics, as, as you will. Um, mm -hmm. And so I started off there doing um, laser hair removal. Um, I brought on an anal bleaching procedure that became quite popular. Um, and I also brought on different procedures, um, such as like chemical peels for the butt and body and microneedling procedures to help like refine like you know the butt cheeks with if it, some people have acne dark spots all that good stuff that i take care of okay so let's break it down a little bit on some of these treatments you just listed off and nope. this is such a great time it's the beginning of the year everyone's trying to get healthy but as you say aesthetics are another part of our need to take care of ourselves yeah. what are, talk a little bit about so anal bleaching what is that and Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, so the term in itself, I think, is really more of an SEO thing. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not really truly bleaching. There's no peroxide involved or anything like that. Right. Um, it's just, a, you know, like, you know, when you when you plan things out as a procedure, you kind of go with what it actually is, but, like, find the term that's also going to sell. So it's essentially a chemical peel that's designed for hyperpigmentation. Um, okay. And so what it does, it helps even out the skin tone for people who have more... Um, hyperpigmentation around their hole or inner leg okay. area or groin, you know? Um, so it really just kind of like evens it out to match the rest of their skin tone. Um, it won't lighten up an area that is not hyperpigmented. And so that's like why a lot of times I'll have like consults before I do these procedures to make sure someone's a candidate for them. Um, because we live in a world that's just like, you know, very fixated on you know everything aesthetics and we look at each other and oh, so yeah. guys will come in sometimes and be like oh i have a dark hole and i'm looking at him like it's not it just it matches actually the rest of your body so you can't uh -huh. really change that um it's not you know i, I don't literally bleach it um but if someone does have, like, you know hyperpigmentation around it then i can definitely help with that and even it out so there's a less of a transition between like their butt cheek and their hole if that makes sense okay yeah yeah um, I got to imagine you had to, it, you, this is something you always wanted to work in, but like when I've seen Dr. Goldstein, he's looking at your ass region and yeah. he's, I've never felt more comfortable talking about my ass region and all that area than with Dr. Goldstein. Was there a, a, a bridge that you had to kind of cross on how you were going to deal with clients and, or patients 
And what's that like? Are people nervous or were you, are you nervous about talking to people about those areas? It's funny that you say that. Cause like, I think that there are some people who are just meant to do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a very liberal household. Like sex wasn't a taboo subject. Um, so it's always been something like, I've been able to talk to my parents about it, like all those things. It's not like something I'm shy about. Right. Um, so it personally wasn't hard for me to assimilate to it. I was like, all right, let's just do this. Um, some patients are definitely very nervous. Um, and mm -hmm. they, you know, we get all different types of people coming in, um, all different walks of life, body shapes, you know, like genders, everything. Um, and so it really just depends where that person's at. I tend to notice that my like very young patients um, who are like early 20s to mid 20s are like, mm. they're sometimes like, Snapchatting the procedure to their friends while we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh my God, you can't believe where I'm at. Like, look at what he's doing. Like, full of everything. And I'm like, okay. I'm just like, just like <laughs> right, right. And I have you know, many other patients who are, you know, more millennial and older um, okay. that tend to be more shy, tend to be more reserved about it. And I kind of, I, I, there's different approaches based on like what it is that I'm feeling, but I usually try to like crack a light joke. Like, you know, like if it makes you feel better, like you're the fifth asshole I've seen today. It's 11 a.m. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I love that. Yeah. I do too. Like, oh, like they get a good laugh out of it. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, so we're just going to take a look. We're going to talk about it and we're just going to get through it. Um, and then oh, cool. honestly, like everyone on their second time coming around is like, they're super chill. Like they're telling me right, all about right. it. Like they're just super open. Um, so just kind of like making like them people feel like safe. And I think like humor helps a lot. Um, Absolutely. It, I don't think that it's smart to avoid like, like the white elephant in the room. Do you know what I mean? Like we're, we're talking mm -hmm. about your whole, let's just say it. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. You will be spreading your cheeks in front <laughs> your of me. Cheeks. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> And I hate to take the focus off of the ass because that's my favorite subject, but I do. Okay. Would, I would like to talk about, we can take it back there if you want to eventually, but I would like to talk about the face because I've been thinking about getting some Botox. When do you think is the best time to get it? Like what age? Because we did discuss a little bit about age. What, what, yeah. what do you think about that? Uh, I always kind of feel like mid twenties is best. I, I don't like okay. to push on people like so yeah. early. I mean, there's a lot more younger people doing it, and I will treat anyone who's eighteen or older. Um, in mm -hmm. my, I, I, I work at Bespoke Surgical part time now. Um, I started my own facial aesthetic practice this year, um, so um, I spend two days a week in my own office, which I'm at right now. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm also at Bespoke three days a week, where I do strictly okay. like anal you know, and body stuff. Okay. Um, so we should mention in New York City, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Surgical is located right by Union Square, and my private practice is located right by Bryant Park. Um, so with Botox, I'll treat anyone over 18, um, but usually it's um, people like mid-20s will start. I think it's best to start doing it before you actually have any wrinkles forming, so it's pre more preventative. Okay. Um, yeah. I always say, like, little tweaks along the way are the graceful way to age. I think aging is beautiful. And it's a privilege. Um, I'm not yes. trying to make anyone look like, you know, like they're not aging. I think you just want to look good for your age. Right. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, I agree. So I think that that's more of like the realistic, healthy way to think about it. And so I have to reeducate and reorient my patients to thinking that way too. I don't want people to be super, um, very obsessive over it, which sometimes you will mm -hmm. find in the field. Um, but they're frozen in time. Yeah, I mean, it's really tough. I mean, I, I am not, I, I understand where they're coming from because I know that there's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on people to look a certain way. So mm -hmm. I'm very empathetic with it. Um, but I think that sometimes you will meet people where you you know that servicing them isn't a help to them. It's it's a disservice. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. I, you do encounter that. And there are people that I politely refuse to treat um, just because I don't think it's a good thing for them. Um, and not a smart move for me as a provider. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like I do think early Botox intervention is great for aging gracefully. Um, mm -hmm. Usually you do it three to four times a year. Um, oh. And then, yeah. 
Okay, when can I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd love to have you. Because <laughs> I'm way above tw- my 20s. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things I, I also loved reading about your in your bio is that you really believe in a skincare regimen and taking care of your skin. And so many people don't. I've always tried to take care of my skin since I was a young kid. And how talk about skincare and what we should at the very minimum sh- we should be doing the very minimum is wearing sunscreen every day that's number okay. one the sun is the number one okay. source of aging um number two i would say it, having a retinol um retinol is a vitamin a derivative um you can find weaker retinols um over the counter um but you can also ask um your aesthetic provider or a dermatologist to prescribe you retinol um okay. they come in all different sorts of doses um, so you, you kind of usually start at a lower dip percentage just so it's not so irritating because retinols can be quite drying. Um, yeah, I, I use 5% or 0.5%. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, 0.5%. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I use that. Great. Um, what I usually recommend people do um, with their retinol is kind of do like a, like a sandwich technique application. So you do a little bit of moisturizer first then your pea-sized amount of retinol all over, and then you do a little bit of moisturizer afterwards. That way you're not getting dried out from the retinol, um, right. but you're still getting all the benefits of increasing the cell- cellular turnover rate. Oh. Got it. And we do like to keep it sexy here on Tech's Podcast, so I do have to ask this, because I saw on Boomer Banks's Twitter that he was getting a penile sensitivity procedure and was this you that, that performed that, or was am I wrong in saying that? No, or? it was me. It was me. Oh, my goodness. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so um, in addition to aesthetics, I also do a little bit of sexual health. Um, when I was in school, I did a specialty uh, clinic rotation um, in sexual health at a popular urology practice. Um, and so there I kind of got more interested in sexual health from more of the urological side. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I have a shockwave device that I use here um, on on the penis. And it takes about usually like six sessions or so. You do one session per week. Um, Mm -hmm. And what it does, it sort of, it breaks up like some of the plaques that form in the capillaries as we get older, like just from honestly, like wear and tear, honestly. Um, (laughs) It's one of those things. I, yeah, I have yeah. it, I bet. <laughs> yeah. so, um, it also it encourages your body um, to produce more capillaries by causing micro injuries that is causes a, a cascade of regeneration in the tissue. Um, it also uh-huh. will help stimulate some nerve tissue as well. So overall, um, guys will experience harder, firmer erections. I combine oh, it with um, what's called the P-shot. Um, so in my office, I also do um, what's called PRP injections. Um, it's platelet-rich plasma. It's when you draw up someone's blood um, and you spin it in a centrifuge and you extract the plasma portion, which is the gold part on top. It's full of stem cells and growth factors. It's, if you inject it in certain areas, you can help regenerate the tissue. So we use it oh. in aesthetics for like the scalp, for hair growth. Um, we use oh. it for my, as a serum for microneedling procedures. If you follow my Instagram account, you can see me do it there. Um, and then we can also inject that plasma directly into the penis. Um, and that helps also with the regenerative process. It's um, the, the machine that I use in terms of the centrifuge. That's super mm-hmm. important whenever you're shopping around for PRP because most people use very cheap devices. Um, okay. You want something that extremely concentrates the product. So I take, for example, like 60 mLs of blood, which is quite a bit. The average tube when you go to the doctor to get like your blood drawn is 8.5 mLs. So I'm taking quite like quite a bit of those. Wow. In okay. One big tube, and then I spin it twice to hyper concentrate that blood down to seven mLs of plasma. While so, they're still there in your office, you're doing this. Yeah, it you takes take the blood and then reinject yeah. it into. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And is the end result uh, more sensitivity and greater erections? Is that kind of what, or harder erections even? Yeah, I guess you can kind of think of it as like a like a natural Viagra, if you will. Like the tissue is okay. being regenerated, so it's more sensitive. The erections are harder and they're firmer. Um, mm. And, you know, you'll get more spontaneous erections because the, you know, the the tissue itself has been regenerated more. Um, so I use, you know, combination modalities is what we really focus on in medicine, like multiple approaches to the same problem. And so that's why I combined shockwave with the P-shot. 
So I'll, I'll usually do six um, rounds of shockwave and one key shot together as a treatment plan for someone. Um, okay. And yeah, it's been great. People have been super happy. Nice. nice. So the results are good. We'll have to check that one out too, Cody. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I, so I'm writing everything down. Trust me. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, we also have, I also want to talk about um, hair removal and laser hair removal too, because yeah. um, especially in that anal area region and a lot of people like it smooth there does it remove it forever what's the procedure like and yeah tell us some of them yeah um so the best way to explain how laser works it's targeting the hair follicle and it's destroying okay. the follicle so once a follicle is destroyed it's destroyed forever that okay. being said our bodies are you know if you're a healthy person you can make new hair follicles um it's it, unlike you know other um, cells in your body, your hair follicles can be regenerated. Um, okay. So um, usually laser hair removal for a male patient is about like 12 sessions to get them like pretty smooth. Obviously this varies a little bit on like skin tone, hair tone, um, and like the density of hair. And the right. reason for that is because the way that laser works is that it's targeting pigment. So you want to... that perfect perfect candidate for laser hair removal is someone who's really pale with very dark hair those were okay. the results <laughs> not, <laughs> not me either yeah <laughs> because they have that huge contrast that being said yeah. our laser and you know a lot of lasers out there can treat all different skin tones and hair yeah. tones um it just them just saying that that's the ideal perfect perfect candidate so okay. you're always calibrating the laser settings so that you are not burning the patient but targeting the hair mm -hmm. as someone um if their hair color and skin tone are very close together it's not that they can't be treated they can be it's just going right. to take longer because now you're working at a lower setting because you obviously don't want to burn them right. um and you're just you know you're operating a lower setting so you're not really getting as many follicle destruction um there's, you know, it's a little bit complicated in terms of um, why it is some people get faster results than others in a sense because hormones play a huge factor. Right. So young men, it takes a lot of sessions for them to get fully smooth. That being said, they do see results with every session and it is super, it is a lot easier for them to maintain um, mm -hmm. with grooming and all that. But when you look compare it to, to both cisgender and transgender women who are like on hormones or naturally have hormones that are not as androgen like you know don't have as much testosterone they're right. not producing as much hair follicles oh there so, you go okay so for them you'll see results way faster versus right. like a you know a 25 year old male patient is like boom just like growing yeah. out hair follicles interestingly <laughs> enough if i have i do have some older patients who are in their 60s and they also lose hair very quickly because they don't have high testosterone anymore right uh, right well so, exactly. Uh, <laughs> multifactorial, yeah. So if I have patients who are doing testosterone replacement therapy, um, this one has asked me like, "Oh my god, it just keeps coming back." I'm like, "Well, it's you know, it's the high testosterone levels. It's just kind of yeah. like, it's there's always a give or take, you know." Yeah. Um, but overall, the results are they're beautiful. They're like, they just makes your skin look super clear. You don't have to worry about ingrown hairs as much. You don't have to worry about folliculitis. Oh. Um, so that's one of the you know the benefits of it a lot. You know that people really appreciate um but yeah it, it just depends on the person also when it comes to like people ask me a lot about like sensitivity and pain and all that stuff again it kind of varies on the actual person's pain level to begin with but also mm -hmm. again back to skin tone and hair tone right um the closer that hair tone is to the skin tone the more they feel it okay um okay. if the, the greater the difference is the less they feel it um it's just because the laser is now like it's it's kind of so close to like what is it that it's targeting there. right right mm -hmm. it's getting confused yeah so that makes sense looks for this yeah they yeah. yeah, tend to feel it the most and that's when i'm like i feel bad but um <laughs> it's tough you know because yeah. like, you want to get through it but everyone does get yeah. through it that was always like oh my god i don't think i can handle it i've never had a patient have to stop and i've never had a right. patient discontinue their treatment because of the pain um, okay. Me, <laughs> I will be the first. I'm You'll be I the first. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Like honest, I could honestly make the laser so weak that you wouldn't feel anything. Yeah, Obviously, no, that's I'm, not the real joking. thing. Yeah. Um, but it, it is super adjustable. I have like a cool air device that's attached to it as well to kind of make people more comfortable. But yeah. 
Yeah. I Thank you. It. You're yeah. so kind. I definitely want to check it out. No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, people can, did you have any more questions before we tell where people can find him? Cody? Oh, yeah. No, I don't have any more questions. No. Okay. Um, we can follow you on Twitter, right? Injectable Chris. Is that correct? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same handle and TikTok, Injector Chris. Injector Chris, thank you. We'll put that on the podcast. Um, and that yes. links to your office in New York City as well. Do yeah, you... yeah, totally. Okay. Do you find um do people like ask you questions on TikTok or do you find people if people if our audience wants to kind of ask you questions and they're not in New York, can we do you find you interact with a lot of people outside of the Oh yeah, area? I'm very good about checking my DMs on Instagram and uh Twitter. Okay. I'm not the best at answering back on TikTok. TikTok, um, I just got into, and it's also, it's insane. Like, it's like the, the comments on TikTok are a little bit, they're, they're aggressive sometimes. Yeah. We just reported on a story right now where they're trying to moderate a little bit more towards transgender and... I was listening to that, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's very, like, hateful comments. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I'm really like, over just, like, that. you know, basic, you know, medical procedures that I'm also posting on Instagram that I don't get any comments on like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, TikTok, I just have one that's actually picking up some traction now. Um, and I'm just like, oh my God, like people are very aggressive. Okay. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm not really reading a lot of those. So. Good. Yeah, don't. Yeah. But good. Well, good that you respond to your DMs on Instagram and, and Twitter and all that. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for thank enlightening you. us on this. Maybe I'll come in and see you for a procedure. I would love to have you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah. Have a great night.